Dear Belle, feet can of green beans, which is one of the only vegetables I can get myself to eat right now. <laughs> so back in February, I messaged you a lot of angry words over text that probably didn't make a lot of sense. And I realized now in April kind of what I was angry about. So in my online program, I have to post discussions and often you'll reference stuff and so you have to put a references or citations at the bottom of your post and I spelled the word citation with an s instead of a c and this is something I do because I'm dyslexic not all dyslexics um, but dyslexia does impact me I flip words like c's and s's both verbally while and while I'm spelling like if I were to spell a word to you I might say s when I think I'm saying c um and if I reread my posts and discover that I've spelled something wrong I will go in and edit it but this random guy in my class who I'd never interacted with even virtually, like he and I had never commented on each other's posts before, he messaged me and said, just a heads up, I think you misspelled citations on your discussion post about reviews. I hope this isn't too presumptuous. And originally, his message made me really fucking mad. And I thought it was just because it's this man assuming that I want his correction that I care, that he notices my mistakes, that thinks I'm going to be embarrassed for making a mistake like this, a mistake that I make all the fucking time. I do not have the emotional energy to be embarrassed every time I do a dyslexic slip. I just don't. Um, and so I thought it really came from the underlying sexism from this interaction. But then I realized it had a lot to do with my disability. And while he doesn't know that I have a learning disability and he doesn't know that it was super fucking shitty for him to send me this message. So I don't give a fuck about him. Like, this is not about him. This is about me. And this off-the-hand comment that he sent me thinking he was being a good guy and helping out a fellow classmate really triggered some memories of some religion stuff. And I don't know if... Your church was as big into memorization as mine was, Belle, but there would be like special youth retreats or youth leader meetings where the cream of the crop, the most holy extra or whatever, would memorize a verse over the weekend. In the last churchy session of the weekend of fun events, we would all say one word sequentially from the verse, um, and I would always fuck it up. Like, if I was called on, if I was the one who got pointed on, I would uh, either say the wrong sight word, because I do jumble them, uh, and then we'd have to start over. And then, of course, youth pastors and youth pastor-like positions, those figureheads, like to give teens the opportunity to self-correct, to save their face. But if I've already made one mistake, and I'm already panicking about my dyslexia, and I'm already panicking about being in public... I'm not going to be able to self-correct the second time you point at me. I'm in a state of crisis. And I remember this one weekend, I fucking managed to not mess up because I got a tiny letter. I got a, uh, you know, like one of the small words in this verse. And the relief that washed over me was more extreme than any of the Holy Spirit sobbing that I experienced at all <laughs> the rest of the weekend. But this, this message also reminded me of a leadership meeting where the pastor was like, let's memorize a verse in 10 minutes. And when I point to you, you say the next word. And it was led by the head pastor, which was super weird because we did have a youth pastor at the time. Um, and it wasn't even 10 minutes. He told us to look at the piece of paper and then he said, okay, turn the paper around, let's go. And he pointed to me and I said, I'm not going to know. I, I can't participate in this. And he's like, oh, no, come on, try. And then he circled back to me. And I'm like, I, I still don't know. And he's like, well, look at the paper again. And we, we had to start all over from the beginning. And I got it. He pointed at me a third time. And I'm like, you don't understand. I'm dyslexic. I cannot do this. And I was in tears. My whole body was in distress. She felt so unsafe because it's a huge shame trigger. I mean, I know that now, but I didn't know it then. I was feeling so ashamed that God would think I didn't love him enough because I couldn't memorize a Bible verse when the head of the church wanted me to have a Bible verse memorized. And if I really loved God, I would figure out how to memorize better. And I just, the meeting wrapped up and we dismissed shortly thereafter. That was the last activity. And I got in the car and I just 
broke the fuck down. And my parents were like, but I broke down a lot. So I didn't really catch them off guard. And I shared what had happened in my, like, when I cry, my voice gets really high pitched, kind of like beaker from the Muppets. <laughs> yeah, it, it was real bad, but I like spat out what occurred. And my dad was so heartbroken for me that he started crying, which like didn't help me emotionally regulate. Um, and I think he said he was going to talk to the pastor about the whole situation. And I can't remember if past the pastor apologized. I just really remember the way I felt in that room being pointed out again and again and again, and I never got it. And all of these other student leaders could do it, but I couldn't. And so I just felt like such a fraud. And so this dude messaging me in February, yeah, I got mad about this sexist component of it, but it also dredged up all of this spiritual abuse that I was not ready for. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to share those thoughts because I, I am struggling to write about it. I just can't. Anytime I think about writing about that moment at the leadership meeting, that stuffy room on a hot day, like I, 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 I have my scene, I have my characters i have all of the components to write this and i can't my body gets so scared and overwhelmed so i wanted to speak about it because i thought maybe i'd be able to process it verbally if i can't write about it yet Whew. i'm gonna go back to listening to harry potter and the sacred text which is this podcast i've told you about and i hope you've started listening basically they read harry potter like it's the Bible and they study it like it's a sacred text. And it really made me feel better about wasting all that time learning how to do a biblical study because I realized, aha, huh, I could read anything with these literature skills that I developed before. So you should check it out or do something today to make yourself feel good. And we really have to be intentional about making ourselves feel good and making sure our bodies are safe and they feel the love that we didn't always feel when we're in our religious environments. I love you, Belle. I'll see you soon.